But yeah, I uh, really am genuinely excited about today's message. I am, we have been in this series, uh, really, I feel like this whole year has been about equipping us as Christ followers. And we started out this year and we uh, had a series about time and seasons. And we spent some time on time and seasons. And then we went into a season on being prepared to really fight, fight for our family, fight for our faith, fight for those things that God's called us to fight for. What's that fight that God called you to? And then after we finished the fight series, we're kind of in our third series for the quarter of the year. And uh, we've been talking about being purposed and prepared. I mean, if we're gonna go fight and we are gonna be fighting a war, we need to be equipped to do that. And so we've spent some time in this series. We've been in here for 12 weeks now, I think. We did several weeks. We've been calling them chapters within our staff. And so we spent several weeks, chapter one, on really just hearing from God. I mean, if there's anything that we can do in our life, the importance of hearing from God to help us to be purposed and prepared for the seasons that lie ahead of us is to hear from God. But then we spent maybe six or seven, maybe even eight weeks on prayer, not just hearing from God, but being able to be in relationship with God, talking to God, and how when we pray, we are really partnering ourselves with God. He doesn't need us as a partner, but he wants us as a partner. And so that's what prayer is. It's developing this relationship with us and the Father. And so today, we're gonna kind of shift gears, and you know how I like my things to rhyme and match, and so we've done hearing from God, talking to God, but today we're gonna do walking with God. And we're gonna spend several weeks here in this walking with God. Because I feel like as Christians and as the church, we have such a responsibility to walk with God. Not just for ourselves, for our own sanity, right? But for the people around us, for our children, for the people that we work with, for the world, we really have a responsibility to walk with God. And in that responsibility comes this freedom. Because in that, we are the ones who get to benefit of the lifestyle of walking with God. And part of this series that I've really been thinking about is just today's culture, today's world. How do we walk with God in today's world? You know, it's hard because sometimes you look at the Bible and you're like, well, we don't wear robes and sandals. And our biggest issue isn't if we eat meat or not. We're past that, right? And we look at the Bible and sometimes it's hard to look at the Bible and see what we need out of this Bible today. But throughout the Bible is this current of men and women that walked with God. And today I really want to kind of dive in to the secret sauce of walking with God. Like this is it. This is like the biggest thing ever, the secret sauce of walking with God. And I've personally been spending a, I usually do, I read the whole Bible every year. And then uh, this past quarter, I've really just felt like I want to sit in the Psalms. So I've been sitting in the Psalms. The Psalms are written by David and several other authors. It's just very relational. And I've been paying really good attention, not just quickly reading, but really, what are these Psalms actually saying, the richness of these verses? Uh, Today they were singing, who am I that you would be mindful of me? Well, that's out of the Psalms. That's David saying, God, Who am I that you're mindful of me? We're singing these beautiful words and the Psalms has written these beautiful words. And there's this this scripture that has just been in my heart for the past few weeks. And every time I wake up, I begin to speak this scripture over myself and I begin to visualize what my life looks like when when I'm walking in this. And so I wanna take you this morning, if you're taking notes, Write this down and, and like go read over it. Read over it in multiple translations. Really let it center in your hearts. But here it is in Psalms 1 verse 3. And it says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Ever he does shall prosper. And I've been thinking about us as the church, as the body of Christ, as Christians, we are to be like a tree, a tree. And I was thinking about on this property in particular, we have tons of these big oak trees, huge, huge oak trees, 50, 75, 100 year old oak trees that you can't even put your arms around. So if you've got, if you've got in your head this morning a visualization of an oak tree, right? The how old oak trees are and how stable and secure oak trees are. We uh, actually have a little pet name for Rod around here. We call him the oak because he's like an oak tree. He's been here forever and ever and ever and ever. And he's seen so many seasons, right? So that's what an oak is like. 
an oak tree. And so I was thinking about us as, as the church, the, the, the word of God saying, we are like a tree planted. That's what we were like, a tree planted. And I begin to think about what do trees that are planted, especially trees that have been planted for a long time, what do they provide? Well, one of the things that trees provide is shade and protection, right? I know even in our front yard here, when we have picnics and things, where do you wanna have the picnics? Near the oak trees, because they provide shade and protection from harmful things around us, right? So they provide shade and protection. Another thing that trees provide is oxygen. And if you made it through school very far, you know that oxygen is something that we are required to have to be able to breathe, right? So without oxygen, we die. So trees put forth oxygen. But another thing that trees put forth is beauty, And it's not really even a man-made beauty, it's a special type of beauty. We've been traveling a lot lately and I've been on several flights and um, it's been unique because usually all you can see is clouds, but the flights that I've been on, I've been able to see all the way to the ground. And as I have flown, I've been, been thinking about just the earth and just how beautiful it is. We flew right over the Grand Canyon the other day and it was simply beautiful. It was dry and it was desertous, but it was beautiful. And then we had flown kind of near the mountains and it was so green, you could see these luscious mountains and all the different things we were seeing around us. It was was just beautiful. And that's really how a tree is. It's just beautiful. There's really, you could, man could make the most beautiful city, the most beautiful king, the most beautiful palace, but there's nothing more beautiful than God's simplistic, perfect creation. That's what a tree is. It's just beautiful all on its own. It doesn't need our little fix-ups to make it beautiful. It's just It's just beautiful. A landscape filled with trees is, it's just beautiful. And so that's really what a tree automatically provides is this shade and protection and this oxygen and this beauty. But in this scripture here, it's not talking about just a normal tree. It's actually talking about a special tree. In fact, my Bible above it said a tree of life. And here's what it says in those, two, those three verses. It says, or three lines, it says that he'll be planted like a tree by the waters that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So let's look a minute. It says that brings forth fruit in its season. Actually, the translation of its season is each season. So it's not a tree that only bears fruit in the spring or the summer. No, its season is every season. It says that it bears fruit in each season, a tree that is constantly bearing fruit. And then it says that the tree never withers. The flowers never fade, the leaves never fade, it never withers. And then thirdly, this is the part that we really like, it prospers in all that it does. That we are called to prosper in all that we do. Church, I wanna say this this morning, that we are called to be this tree of life that I'm describing this morning. That is the life that God equipped us to have. That's the life that God called us to. Y'all know I love going back to the beginning of the book. Genesis 1, 28. This is the life that God called us to. A life where we would be fruitful and we would multiply and we would subdue the earth and we would rule and reign and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and that we would walk in authority and we would love our lives and love what we do and every day we would walk in the garden with our creator. That was the original idea for us to be trees of life, trees of life, that life would birth forth in us, that we would multiply and live fruitful lives. That was the call for us to live this way. And that's how it was in the garden when Adam and Eve walked with God, this was the natural response of their lives. They would live fruitful lives. Let me tell you this, guys, all of these years later, that still hasn't changed. When we walk with God, we live fruitful lives. That's what happens when we walk with God. And so today I really wanted to focus in on this scripture because I think it's showing us something. It's showing us the fruit of when we are a tree planted by the living water, the the fruit of being that. And I was thinking about this morning when we talk about fruitfulness, I know that's kind of a church word, but what is your idea of fruitfulness? In in your life, if you were to say, what is the ideal version of my life where I'm at my best at all times? where the people I interact with, I'm not the grumpy cat in the room, right? But instead, I'm giving life to everyone who wants, who comes in my path. 
Man, everybody that my work loves to come and talk to me because there's something about me that just brings hope and life when I enter the room. Man, my kids, man, I have an easy time with my kids because I'm an example and a role model to them. They want to look up to me. They want to be like this in my life. Man, sometimes I used to get so angry all the time about every situation, and instead I, I really just don't ever lose my cool. Man, I used to really struggle with insecurity and feeling like I'm not enough, but now I just have this overwhelming confidence in myself and in who God made me to be. And because of that, I no longer go around looking for my needs to be met. Instead, I have this fruitfulness that I go around providing fruit and nutrients to everybody around me, not picking off of everybody else's tree, but instead providing to people around me. That's, that's, a, that's what a fruitful life looks like. I mean, there's this thing inside of all of us that we want to have significance, we want to have influence, and I think the world has distorted it, but that design inside of you is not something that the world has placed there. It's something that your creator has placed there. A design to come into the world and be fruitful and multiply and make everywhere you go a better place, bring hope and light. The Bible says that we're supposed to be the light of the world. That is a call on the inside of every one of us to to be light, and that's what they're describing here with this tree, it was this tree of abundance, this tree that lived this fruitful life, that gave fruit to everyone that would come in contact with this tree, and it would be prosperous. And so I think that this tree thing is such an important ideal for us to wrap our heads around. Are we that tree? And I think we're in a culture right now that is gasping for air and straining for nutrients. Are we that tree that brings oxygen to the world around us? Are we that tree that's able to provide fruit and nutrients to the people in our lives and the world around us? That's, that's really the call that we are, we are called to. And the Bible says that when we walk with God, that is the fruit of our lives, that we will become this, this fruitful tree. And so this morning, I, we've talked a lot about what we do with the fruit, but what I wanna spend some time this morning talking about is how do we become this tree of life? How do we become a tree of life? This is describing in Psalms 1 verse 3 right here, this tree. I don't think there's any Christian to ever walk the planet that would be like, I don't want to be that kind of tree. Right? There's something about when we read that scripture that just stirs our spirit because we know we're called to more. We know we're called to produce fruit and, and be something in the world around us to bring light and hope in our world. And so it stirs us. So there's this process, though, in becoming a tree of life. I'd like to tell you the story that last week, all these big oak trees that you see, we just brought them in from nowhere and just planted them just like that. But the truth is, there is no way we planted those trees here just like that. And we always talk about having all this fruit and all these trees. Like we expect to have instant trees sometimes and instant fruit. And so first and foremost this morning, I want to make sure we understand that we cannot give fruit if we don't have a tree that's first planted, yep. right? Fruit comes from trees. Fruitfulness is the response to a tree that is planted. In fact, fruitfulness is the response to faithfulness. If that tree has been faithful and diligent and staying planted in the soil, the results of that tree will be fruitfulness, Right, because fruitfulness comes from faithfulness. And what fruit is, it's a sign of maturity. Fruit is often a sign of good time spent in the soil with the proper nutrients. I, uh, I'd like to use agricultural uh, stories here because I sort of try to do a lot of planting in our house. And um, if you've been here long enough, you know I, I name my trees. If I plant them, I name them. And so they're like my pets kind of, and I kind of talk to them sometimes, and it's not weird, it's, it's not as weird as it sounds, and so I just encourage them, okay, and so um, we had this tree a couple years back named Joey, and mom, you'll remember Joey, she did this to me, because Joey, the story of Joey is really a message about the Christian church in 2021, all in one package, so let me tell you just a little bit how Joey went down. We went to a nursery, and I, uh, his name's Joey because he produces, or supposed to produce, Joey avocados. It's a special type of avocado. And so I wanted to have an avocado tree and we went to the nursery and I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, look at this tree. How cool would it be to have avocados, right? Everybody loves some guacamole. Okay. So we're going to do this thing. But here was my idea. Like I really didn't want to take care of Joey or plant Joey or water Joey or be responsible for Joey, but it would be a great plan for my mom. 
And so I'm like, okay, mom, I'm gonna buy this tree and then I'm gonna have somebody come and plant it in your yard and then I want you to take care of this tree for me every day. I hope you're, getting, I hope you're making the Christian parallel to this right now. And so I put Joey in her yard and I didn't even plant it myself. I called my son to come plant it because I didn't wanna plant it either. So he plants Joey, mom waters Joey every day. So for like two weeks, I would go and check on Joey and he kind of looked the same and it was really boring. And I kept, and then maybe a couple months ago, but I'd check on Joey and then Joey went through a hard winter, went through some rainstorms and Joey just never produced avocados. And I just really got irritated with this plant and really just kind of gave up on it because the truth was it wasn't producing any fruit. But the other side to the story was, well, it only been in the ground for six months and it takes avocado trees two to three years to produce fruit. And so I became so frustrated with Joey and I swore against avocados for the rest of my life because something's wrong with avocados. No, something was wrong with my measure of time in this situation. And so I stopped nurturing Joey or nurturing Joey through my mother. And finally one day I came over and Joey was gone. And I said, Mom, what happened to Joey? And she was like, I ain't doing that no more. I'm so sick and tired of taking care of your tree. And I feel like sometimes in our life, we are like that with the things in our life. We don't really want to plant it. We really don't want to water it. We don't want to steward it. Just call me when the fruit's available. Right? And if I could give my mom or my grandma or my dad or my cousin or maybe Pastor Steph, they could nurture this tree and I'll just reap the benefits of the fruit. And I wish I could say I'm just talking to y'all this morning, but at times I'm talking to me too. Because there's these things in our life where we just want instant fruit in our life. And every time there's not instant fruit in our life, we're frustrated at the fruit instead of being frustrated at the fact that we just don't want to sit long enough and wait for the fruit to come. The fruit's coming. That's a tree. It's made to produce fruit. That's its job. The fruit is coming. It's just not time yet for the fruit. And I think that sometimes the problem with us as the church and as Christians, we never stay planted long enough for there to be fruit. I'm sure if Joey was still in the ground, this would have been second or third year, and I'm pretty sure now we would have some fruit, at least some little avocados. Maybe they wouldn't be big ones, but we'd at least have some small fruit. But frustration came, and instead of waiting for that fruit, we just went ahead and pulled Joey right out of the ground. And, and, I, and I think that's something as Christians we can do. And that doesn't surprise me that Christians have a crazy reputation. As Christians, our reputation is either that we're flaky or fakey, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're either flaky or fakey. That's so funny. Y'all are gonna use that this week, I hope. <laughs> but we do. We like flip, flop all the time. And we're either flaky and we just have the new thing every single day and we just keep pulling up our roots and replaying ourselves all the time. We're always on this new thing and we're flaky or we're fakey. And instead what we do is we just fake the Christian life. We know what fruit looks like and we want to have that fruit. And so we fake like we have it, but really we don't have the nutrients in our lives to support the fruit that we wanna grow. And so instead we deliver fake fruit. And so the process of becoming a tree of life is to first understand that fruit comes from a tree that's been planted. But here's the second thing you've got to understand this morning is that a tree is not planted as is. I didn't bring these oak trees in as is. No, every single tree starts at a seed. Every single tree starts at a seed. How did the big flourishing oak that provides shade become an oak tree? one day at a time, every single day, staying planted in that ground. Every single day, one day at a time. The problem with it is that sometimes when you're a seed, it starts in a dark, quiet, lonely place. And we are convinced that if our life is not constantly exciting, constantly engaging, friends everywhere, money everywhere, fun everywhere, that we are missing something. And I think we are missing something. I think sometimes we're missing that time spent in that dark, quiet, lonely place, allowing that seed that we planted time to germinate and grow and begin to bring roots in. So, so trees start at seed form. And I've heard it said this way before. It says that there is seed time and harvest. Seed 
time, and then harvest. It's not one season, it's time in between. We plant the seeds and then they grow to a harvest. That's where harvests come from, from seeds being in the ground. And I think we just don't wanna be a seed. Nobody wants to be a seed in the dark, lonely place that has no fruit. And not only do you have no fruit, you have no proof that fruit is even coming, right? And I think we live in such a time of like everything we want, we instantly get it. Like just recently, I got into Amazon shopping. I know I'm a late bloomer, which is weird, but I just jumped on it. And when the kids come home and they're like, we need X for school tomorrow, you can get it there in like five minutes. It's weird, Honestly, I feel creeped out halfway, but I've been doing that because I need it right now. And I don't want to put the work in to go to the store and I don't want to think it through. I just, I need it right now. We're so used to that. Man, I remember that I'm at the age now, like when I can say this, back in my day, (laughs) you couldn't just get on the internet like you do now. Y'all know the noise. Uh (laughs) Right? Like the noise and the long hours it would take. I mean, It would take forever. And let's talk about when someone picks up the phone. So we really work through patience. We work through waiting for something endlessly. We're nowadays, we don't have to wait for anything. Whatever it is we want, it is happening all the time. I mean, shout out to Pastor James, though. He figured out somehow in the age of AOL how to play online video games with the neighbors in that time period. So shout out to you. But we went through this process. We had to figure it out. Now, I'm sure you like, um, what are you? What's the, the boomers? I'm sure you're judging me right now. I'm being like, really? This is your example of how hard the internet was. Okay, we all have different examples. But the struggle was real for me in that season, and it was very hard. And James and I's relationship is a product of the internet, actually. So don't hate on my example here, but it's like that, right? We go through things in our life, and it's important that we learn to toil. We learn to wait. We learn to be patient. We learn not to give up. We learn to trust that if I sit on this AOL long enough, the dinging's going to end. I'm going to be able to access the internet, right? We know it's a thing, and we don't give up. But trees start at a seed. And if you don't know that, and if you're not factoring that into your spiritual timeline, you will stay frustrated because you will want that instant gratification. But here's the thing, guys. It doesn't go from seed to tree. There's another process in between that time, and that's called bearing roots. You will not see above the ground until there is an infrastructure that's filled under the ground. And I think that's something that we all want as well. We're okay with the seed, we're okay with the dark season, but the root season, now that's another thing. We don't wanna deal with with the root season, but the truth is, guys, is the more developed we are underground, the stronger we are and the more stable that we are above ground. I love this scripture in Psalms, it says this, it says that the godly will flourish like palm trees. You know, palm trees have a very intricate root system. In fact, it's almost a fibrous system. It's thousands and thousands of small roots all underneath the ground that holds that palm tree up. And I was thinking this morning about what would those small roots be? Well, I think those small roots are experiences. Those small roots are character. Those small roots are all the different situations that we go through with God, developing this thick infrastructure of roots. And I think in our minds sometimes we wanna give God one root. All right, God, I went through the bad thing, I missed my deadline on this thing, and so now I've got, I've got my root system, I went through the struggle, right? And we just wanna expedite ourselves right out of the ground. But the truth is, for God's calling on our life to be this big, flourishing tree, we've got to develop a root system. And the more roots that we have, the stronger that we will be. Going back to my gardening woes, another pastime for me and my son Tyler is we grow, we want to grow vegetables in our backyard. We are at 0% right now. But um, one of the things that we did is, or he did, we planted okra seeds in this planter. And he planted about 10 okra seeds in a row, and they were all a few inches apart. And um, so they started popping out pretty quickly, surprisingly. And it was so exciting. You could see it, like one, two, three, four. When you got to number five, 
he was missing, and then it went to the other six. And so they're, they're not symmetrical, which of course would bother me. And so I was out there, I'm like, Tyler, what is wrong with this seed? Why is it not coming out of the ground? He's like, Mom, just chill, relax, it'll be okay. It's just taking longer to come out. I'm like, no, Tyler, there's something wrong with the seed. This isn't working. Look at everybody else. Everybody else is flourishing. Everybody else is coming out of the ground. But this one seed, there's something wrong. So he went back and forth with his wisdom of a 15-year-old telling me, just leave it alone. But I couldn't leave it alone because I was convinced that something was wrong. So what did I do is I started digging. And it didn't take me very long to find that that root was there. It just hadn't popped out of the ground yet. But I could see the stem and the stalk right there underground. And I just moved a little bit of the dirt and there it was. So I pushed the dirt back over. I'm like, no harm, no foul, Tyler, we're good to go. I got a new perspective now. Next day he comes out and he was like, you killed it. <laughs> said, it wasn't ready like I told you. And I wonder how many times that God's like, you're not ready. I'm trying to tell you the things I've called you to. I've called you to bring fruitfulness in life. I'm like, just a minute, just trust me. The process is working. I'm getting you ready. You're about to bloom. You're about to blossom. Just stay put. Keep, quit messing with it, right? Just quit messing with this. I think sometimes as Christians, guys, we aren't just trusting the process. We're coming to church because we believe the process. But are we living the process? Are we really walking with God enough to be stable no matter what's going on around us? We walk in this stability like a tree that's planted by the living water. Man, we are solid. Our foundation is right and I was going through my phone the other day and I actually found some notes from a message I preached a while back. And it was so a while back that I actually forgot about it and it encouraged me. I encouraged myself. But here's what it said in my notes. It said, trust the process. Are you listening? Are you expecting? Are you steadfast? Then it's working. Just look for green. And I think that's something I want to encourage you guys with today. If you're doing those things, it's working. Are you listening? Are you listening for God's voice? Are you going, God, every day I consecrate myself to you. If I'm wrong, tell me, God. I don't wanna take a step that's in the wrong direction. God, if my eyes that I'm seeing this perception, my perception on this topic is wrong, God, change it. If I'm not seeing my job right, if I'm not seeing my spouse right, if I'm not seeing my kids through your eyes, whatever situation it is, God, I'm listening, God, to your spirit. And whatever it is I need to do differently, God, I'm listening, God, show me where to step, show me where to move. So are we listening? Are we expecting? Are we going, God, I believe your word is true and every promise in this book I've outlined and I'm expecting. I maybe don't like the timeline or the process, but God, I know that your word is true and I know it doesn't return void. So God, I'm expecting. But then are we steadfast? And I looked at the definition for steadfast and it said resolute, dutifully firm, and unwavering. Are we walking steadfastly with God? Going, God, this is what you said, and this is who I'm becoming. I am in the growing process, and I'm going to be that tree, and there's going to be fruit. So, God, yes, I'm listening, God. God, I have an expectancy in you. God, sometimes I misjudge myself, but, God, I never can misjudge your character because you're good, you're faithful, you're true to your word. You're going to come through in this situation. God, you are preparing me for things ahead. You've called me for a purpose. From the minute I was even in the womb, you began calling me and outlining the purpose for my life. And so, God, I know you want me to grow in this season, and I know you're walking with me in this season of growth. And if we're truly doing these things, then it's as simple as this. It's working. So good. But Pastor Steph, I don't see it. I don't feel like anything around me has changed. No, it's underground. You're changing. Yeah, but I, 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 don't, I don't feel any different. No, that's part of the process. You're just growing roots. You're growing roots. You haven't been exposed to the sunlight yet. But you will, and you're gonna see that there's been this development going on in the inside of you that you've been getting ready. You're growing roots. You're, you're getting yourself stabilized to become this tree that God's called us to. So and so it's important that we understand that the root process is important. Building our character is important. Going, God, I'll just go as slow as I need to to make sure, God, everything that I need to continue in this season, I have, God. My roots are so important. But let me tell you this morning, of all those things, that scripture outlines the most important thing. The most important thing it says is that you are planted by the rivers of water. 
When you were growing a tree, when you were growing vegetables, the most important thing is where it's planted. Where are we planted? How are we providing water for our tree? And I was thinking about the different types of people and the different types of ways that we provide water for our tree, our life. And I think for some of us, we just wait on the environment to send rain. We go and we plant wherever we want. We plant for the view. We plant for the the stage, the spotlight. We plant for the convenience. We plant for all these other things. And we're just constantly waiting on the environment around us to provide us with rain. The problem with that, with that model is we are subject to the circumstances around us. In seasons of rain, I feel nourished and fine, but when seasons of drought, I'm dry and I'm withering up and I don't have enough to make it to the next season. It's not because we have a tree problem. The problem is, is that we aren't planted in the right spot. The seed that God made in your life is a good seed. Where is it planted? Is it planted by the living waters? I think another place that we plant sometimes is close to the river, close enough that we can go get buckets when we're dry, but we're not actually getting the nutrients and the resources from that river that flows. We're smart enough to know that that's the good water, but not smart enough to go and plant right by it. And I think if we're honest, I think that's what most probably of us do sometimes We have a tendency to know that we need the nutrients. We know we need Sunday morning because that's what refreshes our week. So we come here and we bring our buckets to Pastor Steph, Pastor Rod, or like fill my bucket up. Oh, good, thank you. I'm gonna go water. I feel so much better now. Thank you for the bucket. And hey, shout outs for us doing that. At least you know where to get your water. But imagine if you just moved your tree by the riverbank where the flowing water was. Imagine living by the riverbank, right there. And I think that's what God's calling us to do. He says, man, we get so, so confused on what the priority is, the priority on where we plant. Do we plant in our job? Do we plant in our career? Are we planting in our marriage? Are we, what is this thing that's gonna give us the nourishment and the value and the purpose to become this tree? But when we go and we shift our focus and we plant by the living water, those nutrients flow to us every single day. We're flowing in the river. There's this thing that becomes this ease and flowing with God, knowing who you are, knowing you're planted. But you've got to get to that place where you know. Because if you don't really trust what God's word said, and if you don't really trust the process, you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to go plant by this river and give it about two weeks and then do like I did with the okra. Go, well, clearly it's not working. Let's just pull this guy out of the ground, right? We've got to go and we've got to to plant ourselves. And that's what Jesus was saying in John 15. And that that passage has really been something that God's been highlighting for me in my life right now. And uh, John 15, verse four, here's what Jesus is saying. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I think that's one of our problems and I think that sometimes that's why we're so exhausted because we we know we're called to bear fruit and we want to live fruitful lives. Man, the closer we get to God, the more we have an image of him in our life that we want to reflect. Man, I didn't used to care how I treated my kids, but now I really do wanna raise godly kids. Man, I used to not care if I was offending somebody at work, but now kind of feel a little bit convicted. I actually don't want to disrespect my boss. In fact, I'm starting to feel a little bit conviction when I go around and I, I spread gossip within my, my people I work with. Man, I, I kind of feel indifferent about it, and I don't, I don't want to be that. But the thing is, is you can't be fruitful unless you're connected to the vine. So good. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can make some fake fruit, But the real fruit, the fruit that sustains, it comes from being connected to the vine. And here's what Jesus says. He says, I'm the vine and you're the branches. There's another agricultural um, passage he's using. You're branches now. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. When you abide with me, you bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing 
And if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Man, that's powerful too. We just got into that prayer series. Man, I've been praying and praying about this thing and it's not coming to pass. Are you really abiding? And not to say that it can't come to pass without abiding, but here in the scripture, it clearly lines out when we abide in him and his words abide in us, ask what you want and it'll be done. But it says that his words abide in us. So clearly, the longer that we abide in him, the more the words inside of us begin to change. They're different words, they're different prayers, they're different desires. It's a different walk. It's the walk of a tree that's planted and brings forth fruit in every season, not just the good seasons, but every season. And here's what comes of that. Here's what comes from a life when we live like a stable tree planted. It says, by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and you will be my disciples. This is where we shine glory on God. We really want to change culture around us. We really wanna create a culture that we can raise our kids in, a culture of the kingdom of God. You really wanna do that? Well, what we have to do is we have to live in a way that glorifies God. No more flaky and fakey. Strong, stable trees. That aren't, that aren't challenged by the winds and the waves and all these different things and don't get in our fields all the time. And don't lose our, no, no, we're so solid in that tree. And today, if you leave feeling all this pressure to be a solid tree, but you don't feel the understanding of what it's like to be by the living water, it's gonna be exhausting. You won't be able to do it. It'll be frustrating, it'll feel like you're failing. But there's just something that happens when you're near that living water that it's part, you're constantly drinking from that. And next week, I wanna spend some time kind of helping try to practicalize what does that look like? Because I think it looks different from everybody, right? It looks different for everybody, but there's something that comes with, man, when you were planted by that water, your life is refreshing, refreshing and it's whole and it moves. It's not that there's not storms. It's not that there's some crazy other trees next to you, but it's that you are living in this place of nutrients and living water. And in that, my father is glorified. And I think we're all in different seasons, but I know a season for me that I've been going through is this season of, God, I just wanna glorify your name. Like, God, I just, I want to live for you and I want to shine a light on your goodness, your mercy, not mine. Because God, you're so good. And sometimes, God, I feel like we mess it up and people aren't seeing how good you are because they're getting lost in how judgy and yucky and sometimes all these different things that we are. Like, God, but you're so glorious and amazing. Like, I don't want anybody to miss out on that. God, this morning we were singing that song about roar like an army of angels. And I thought about our voices singing in this place today. Like, God, this is us glorifying you in this moment. God, we are roaring like an army of angels to glorify you. So God, I wanna be a fruitful tree. God, I wanna be planted near that living water. I want to be stable. Man, God, I want to go into the world around me, to culture around me, and change culture for your kingdom and your glory. God, help me to be a Daniel, where I can go into a society and a culture that doesn't even know who you are, and instead I can walk in your goodness and mercy so well and so honorably that people are actually elevating me and promoting me because of the God that lives inside of me. They called Daniel's God the God of Daniel. And they trusted the God of Daniel. They'd ask Daniel, what does the God of Daniel tell you? Because what he brought about the God of Daniel was, was honor and integrity and stability. In a world that says you're no longer allowed to pray, Daniel said, I pray every day. And I'm gonna honor, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna move on what God's word said. I'm gonna honor God and I'm gonna honor everybody else. It's, it's complicated sometimes doing both. Sometimes we're so trying to honor people that we don't honor God and vice versa. But there's this place that we get to when we're planted by the river, we can do both. We can honor like Daniel honored. Man, we can be strong and courageous like Moses and, and Joshua, leading God's people, leading our family into the promised land. We can make a stand and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will be stable in our home. We will be prosperous like the oak tree. Yeah. But we gotta have that stability in our lives to do that. 
Pastor James talked about the wisdom of Solomon this morning, the stability that it took for Solomon to ask for wisdom. In fact, he didn't ask for wisdom. What he asked for was a discernment to rule and judge God's people accordingly. God, with my life, give me wisdom so I can serve the people around me. Not wisdom so I can get really wealthy and make it to the top. No, God, give me wisdom. That comes from stability. Church, there is a call on us right now to be stable in the world around us, to be strong, planted, prosperous, wise, fruitful in every single season. But it's not living water. It's where we're planted. And the Bible says when we plant, it will come forth fruit in due season. So church, I wanna encourage you today, don't uproot. Don't think something's wrong. If you're doing it, it's working. And just wait for God to show up. Wow, what a powerful message. I pray that it blesses you as much as it blessed me. We always wanna give you an opportunity to be a part of what God is doing here at LS Church. There's always something going on from kids to youth, all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you do wanna give, text LS Church to 77977, or you can head to our website, lschurch.tv. Well, hey, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.